Hello everyone, Dara Murphy here. I'm the Ilan Piper and Whistle Player with Celtic Woman and I'm delighted to be here today for the next instalment of their video series and today I'll be talking about the Ilan Pipes and my relationship with them over the years and I'll go through the history, brief history of the Ilan Pipes and we'll do a few technical things like how the reeds work and stuff like that and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of the instrument once we're done. So let's get stuck in. Pipe and instruments have existed in various forms for the best part of a millennium uh, in many different cultures. Uh, in Ireland, the Ilan pipes appeared as they do today at the start of the 18th century. They would have been preceded by other pipes such as the Pibmore, um, whereas the Pibmore were predominantly intended for battlefields. The Ilan pipes was a more peaceful instrument being played at weddings and things like that. The tradition of villain piping went into a decline after the famine, but a revival movement was started with the formation of clubs in Cork and in Dublin around the start of the 20th century. The revival continued through the first half of the 20th century with the help of travelling pipers, initially John Cash and then Felix and Johnny Dorn, who would have brought the tradition of piping to all four corners of the country, introducing piping to people who may never have been able to hear it before then. <laughs> Due to fears of another decline in Ilan piping during the 60s, uh, various groups were set up to try and arrest this decline, like the Armagh Pipers Club, which was founded by Brian and Ethna Valley in 1966, and then the Pibri Ilan in Dublin, which was founded by Brandon Branagh, and other pipers like Seamus Ennis, Leo Rosum and Paddy Maloney. Um, and without the tireless efforts of these clubs, the piping tradition wouldn't be as thriving as it is today. In the 1970s, the Ilham Pipes gained international recognition due to the popularity of bands like Planksty, the Bothy Band and the Chieftains. And their Ilham Pipers, Liam O'Flynn, Paddy Keenan and Paddy Maloney, brought the Ilham Pipes to the attention of the world with their concert tours and ever since, the Ilan Pipes have been flourishing. They're called the Ilan Pipes due to the bellows being used to put air into the bag as opposed to a mouthpiece like other types of uh, pipes. And the Irish word for elbow is Ilan. So the air is blown through here into the bag into the chanter and also into the stock which consists of three drones and three regulators um, it's played sitting down so you can create a seal on your knee at the bottom and that allows you to add more pressure to get up to high octaves so, and uh, that's another difference between the other pipes and other open hold bottom hold pipes is that you, there's two octaves The set I play is a concert pitch set where the fundamental note or bottom note is D. So that's the lowest note you can get. But there are other sets that are flatter in pitch called flat sets and they would have a fundamental note which is either a C or a B flat. A typical set of villain pipes consists of seven reeds. You have a chanter reed, which is in here, three regulator reeds, which go in here. Well, actually, the base one goes up here. And you have three drone reeds, which are a little different than the other two, in that they're a long, straight bit of cane with a little flap that vibrates. And they're all in octaves of D. You have tenor, baritone, bass, same with the regs. The reed for the chanter and the regulators looks like this. It's a double reed similar to an oboe and it consists of a copper tube which has got two bits of key on either side of it. I have a head of a reed here. Once you get to this point, precision is needed because the smallest margins count in terms of tuning and tone and you want them to be perfect. A set of pipes requires a good bit of maintenance uh, due to the pressure they're under at all times and the various parts are constantly in flux with the humidity and temperature, uh, especially with something as delicate as thin cane. 
Uh, but I'm very lucky to have masterful pipe makers here in Belfast, Patrick O'Hare and Aaron O'Hagan, who help me out with looking after the set. When someone starts to learn nailing pipes, typically they'll start with a practice set, which consists of the bellows, the bag and the chanter alone. And then usually they'll progress to adding to the three drones, or less, depending. And then the regulators will come after. Um, in terms of the history of the regs, the tenor one was added first, around the start of the 1700s, and then the other ones were added gradually. And they add harmonic accompaniment to what you're playing on the chanter. So that was a brief history of the Ellen Pipes, along with a little bit of the technical side. If you're interested in learning more, you should visit the websites of Nipibri Ellen or the Armagh Pipers Club. There's a wealth of information on there, whether you just want to learn more about the pipes or you want to learn them yourself. Uh, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll leave you now with a tune we play on tour called Jerry's Beaver Hut. We usually play it before Sive Nuvrenla. I'm looking forward to getting back on tour and hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Until then, stay safe and take care.